One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. Southside Pod! Yes, we're on the South air. Side pod. And the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Pod. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pod! Greenwood Evergreen. Southside Blue pod. Island Beverly. Pay listen, all sub to. You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Oak Lawn Midlothian, Oak Forest Chicago Ridge, Flossmore and Bridgeview, you're listening to Southside Pod! Did you know I have a sports book now? You have a sports book? Yeah. Socks like in the Basement has its own sports book thing set up. You go in, you sign up for it at SocksInTheBasement.com, and then every time somebody signs up, I make money, and they bet. Think of how the gambling racket works. No, honestly, I'm going to tell you this. What's the over under on how many listeners last? <laughs> One. Think two, about think two, about four, five. Think about the the way the gambling racket works. So you go to my site on SocksInTheBasement.com, right? And you sign up for FanDuel or MGM or one of these yeah. things, right? How much do you get? When you sign up, you have to deposit like five bucks or twenty bucks or whatever. And when you do it. They're going to tell you, after you deposit your $20 and you sign up, we're going to give you $200 in bonus bets after you make the first bet. And so they give you $200 in extra money okay. to use, even if you lose that 20 bucks to try to make another bet or as okay. many bets as you want to, right? Okay. So they're giving away money okay. is what they're doing. Bets. They're giving away bets. They're giving away bets. It's not real money. No, they're it's giving like away bets. But I mean, if, you, if you win, like I use one of the bonus bets things after I signed up for it. I actually Everything on the money. Bears. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> to lose. To lose. Then after they do that, they give me money. How much? Well, it depends on how many people sign up a and month, much, but I can make up to 100 bucks lose. a sign up. Wow. So think about the money they're giving away just to get you in there. And then after you get in there, they know you're going to spend a ton of money and you'll probably lose your money. So that's what they're going to do. Now, I'm up because they gave me. Why don't you pay people five bucks a piece to sign up so you get 100 bucks? We, exactly. I think I'm going to start doing that. Do you want to do it? I'll, yeah, I'll do pay it. you to do yeah, it. It'll give be me great. five bucks. I'll put so here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> do I have to bet after that? They no? gave me $120, this company, to spread it out over the six different uh, things in our sports book. Uh-huh. So I had my own accounts. Then they told me, go ahead and bet so you could talk about it. And I was like, all right, fine. I won two of the bets, lost the other ones, but it wasn't my money, right? One of them, I won on a parlay. I won like 300 bucks. Okay. That's that's your best chance. So now I'm playing with money that wasn't even my money. I'm up like $500 right now. That's how they get you. I cashed out. No, I cashed out 400 over it and put it in the bank. (laughs) So so I, I took their 120 to go try the thing out, put 400 in the bank. And I'm just playing around with the other hundred dollars nice. and it never cost me a thing. It's a stare. I mean, like, I'm like this whole gambling thing. Like, like I lived in Reno and I realized right away that you Reno? have to be really selective with your bets. And sometimes you have to say, I don't like any of these NFL games. I'll wait till next week. You have to do that. Yeah. And if you do that and you're smart, you could win. Like I won on a, a couple weeks back. I won. I won on Houston over Houston. Uh, the, Houston. Pits, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Houston. Texans over a, Steelers. It was a huge game. If, yeah. Where, what, what city do the Texans play in? Houston. It's right over by Alice. I that's, hate you That's so the much. apple of Exus, <laughs> isn't it? I literally hate you. <laughs> but I want to know about this bet now, Chris. No, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to you anymore now. You're being a jerk. <laughs> Houston started it. Yeah, you're, you're a jerk. You're a jerk. You're a jerk. <laughs> you're both jerks. Nobody likes you. Southside Pod, of course, brought to you by Family Waterproofing Solutions, named one of the Southland's best now for three years in a row. Bowing walls, window wells, foundation crack repair, anything that keeps water out of your basement and protects your foundation. It is that time of year. There are leaves in the gutters. Gutter Cleaning Service is one of the many services you can sign up for with Express Service, now available online at FamilyDry.com. Know what you want? See the cost right on the website. Order and schedule on-site immediately for quick service. Your basement's best defense is at FamilyDry.com. A pitcher of beer, a pitcher of beer. Let's order another pitcher of beer. That pitcher of beer should come over here. I love that pitcher of beer. We're at Sound Growler Brewing in Tinley Park. I'll be honest with you, John Streets. 
uh, of the Streets Arts Alliance. I have I've been here once or twice before, but I feel like I'm always here in the winter time. I don't know how I end and never ended up on in the in the back, like outside on one of the patios on a beautiful fall day. I, I'm a welcome. Well, thank you. Welcoming and, myself here. Well, you're, you know, you're holding the event. I'm just well, here. Yeah, I'm the curator, but right. I'm also a drinker and a participant of the whole event. Technically, we are supposed to be in winter. Yeah, we are. This is winter, and this is the nicest winter day we could ever expect in <laughs> November. You know it what I mean? It worked out well for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I I would have had artists outside if I would have realized that it was yeah. going to be this nice. Yeah, it's beautiful but, out. Yeah, and you're, it, you're doing a vinyl market. This is a new one for you. Like, generally, you're a guy who does... I don't know, like dark arts, uh, you know, freaky, weird things, uh, sometimes like some straight up craft shows. But Vinyl Market, that caught my eye because I was like, well, that's something new. I just imagine a bunch of people just hunkered over like boxes of records. It's not exactly (laughs) that. You have a few setups where it's just boxes of records. But what makes this one different from like the normal markets you do around? This is 100 percent different than any of the markets that I've ever done Uh, I've never once done a vinyl market before. And one of the things I noticed about this market in particular is that the vinyl searchers, the people that love the records and the vinyls, by the way, random aside, I got called a whippersnapper on patch because (laughs) I called them vinyl. That's because everybody on the patch is 104 (laughs) years old. I don't know about that. Come on. I advertise on them. That's not so. They run our show on there too. So I'm just joking around. Oh, I know. But, um, you know, it's, one of the things is there's a line of 20 people that was waiting outside to, to enter this event because they wanted to search through those vinyl boxes. People were, were lined up in advance. Yeah, 20 people at least. And what's funny is you have to think about it this way. that like they're, They know they're coming in for records, but they don't know what records there are. They just want to get there and have first pick of them in case there's something good there. And it's like they must know what they're collecting. Like It's not like they have, like, I got to get the you know the White Album by the Beatles. I'm sure that's not at this market, right? Like I'm sure that that isn't here. But, I mean, it's not like they have something specific they know is going to be here. They just want to have first pick. 100%. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, the really cool thing is uh, I think two or three of the vendors that we have today that are selling just the, the records and the vinyl – they were here. The Song Growler hosted their own market either a year or two years ago. I wasn't a part of it, so I don't know the exact details. But uh, some of these artists are returning, and they're bringing new stuff, more metal, more punk, more this, more that, trying to appease the potential customers that they're going to have for today. Yeah. And I've talked to that's them. that's what this is kind of here. Song Growler is a metal brewery there that's yeah, how i would describe them it's metal, a metal punk brewery like the music selection the way to punk it's set up you don't think punk. i don't know i know punk is really song growler but i don't work for song growler yeah it's know, just you my don't. interpretation of it i'm a kind of a punk guy myself yeah. loving no effects you know a, 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 like if, if i can get a no effects record i might get a record player yeah yeah you know, just because i love no effects that much but you know i've always interpreted them as purely metal yeah, they are definitely metal yeah when you walk I, in i feel metal but i think they're also kind of new age definitely where they bring based. in yeah yeah <laughs> exactly somebody's definitely they, banging on some drums they bring in some of the younger crowd that likes some of the more punk or the more alternative metal yeah. the more whatever pop yeah but but anyway yeah you just this, you can just pick it out when you look at like the clientele when they walk in here 100 okay? I mean, like did like i Not i don't I feel do very that. i don't feel very cool <laughs> Right, like I well, walk in. I mean, you are old. I don't feel cool walking in here. I'm like, there are some cool people inside of this place. Yeah, that's for 100%. sure. percent. Yeah. So it's not just records, though. I'm noticing that there's like some some clothing that's in there. Some different, like, you know, what? How do you curate this? Because that's the thing we talked about on the show before. You set up these markets, but then you're deciding like which vendors do I want to have there? Like, how how did you curate this? What what was your thought process? So I I basically in the application I put out there was this is going to be a music themed vinyl market the primary goal of this is to have five to seven vinyl vendors that are selling just the vinyl records and then have a mix of artists that can kind of fit that theme you know uh jonathan grimm art Bologna doodles lucky eye ink these are all artists that make stuff non-stop and can totally fit that theme you know lucky eye ink has these keyboards that have sexy legs you know, Jonathan Grimm is doing tabs of music sheets where he draws the artist from the band as an original. You know, and then you've got John Bolonio and his wife that are doing very music artist themed artwork. Right. You know, all of that kind of really blends well with the, the vinyl theme of the market. And that's that's what I was looking for. Even like the, the candy vendors, KP's Candy Factory, you know, she made these, um, you know, 
she got some molds where she could do some musically noted things like the treble clef or the bass clef, you know, kind of formed into some uh, chocolate covered Rice Krispie treats on a stick. You know, all of this kind of goes hand in hand with uh, just a nice music theme, vinyl theme. Well, I, th- I think the, the place you picked, the brewery you picked makes a lot of sense because they have... You, when I walk in here, I always can hear the music. It's very distinct what they do. They're they're artists. They like they like music. And then you're doing something that's very music based when you're doing it. And and I'll, I'll let everybody in on this. John was telling me beforehand. He was like, "This thing's really blown up today. It's the first time I've done it." You were like really pleasantly surprised by the amount of people that are here. But I mean, I think people get into music. Like you couldn't help yourself to tell me that you're a No FX fan. Oh yeah, and you're like, I'm a No FX fan. That's what I do. Like, like, that's what I do. I listen to No FX. Right? You're like me when I sit there and I'm like, Well, Weezer's here. I'm gonna go see him. I like the older stuff better than newer stuff, but I'm gonna go see him. Right? Like we all have like our acts, exactly. and I think that's why this is, this kind of thing resonates with people because, like. You get to go out and geek out and look for stuff that, like, you're into, right? I mean, we can hear the song a million times, but if I can get some kind of cool piece of artwork about a band that I love and put it in, like, my man cave, my bar, wherever I'm putting it, th- this is the kind of place where you're going to find it. So, I, And then people get to listen to music, check out music, drink some beer, eat some tacos. It's a... It's a home run. It's a win-win, you're, as far as I'm concerned. John is really maybe one of the luckiest guys on the <laughs> South Side. He is. Like, you started doing these things, and you were like, you started doing these, and now all of a sudden you're, like, at a brewery, like, every weekend, sometimes two different breweries in, t- in, the, in a weekend, and you have these festivals, and you walk around with your shirts, your very loud Hawaiian shirts and your tie-eye and stuff like that, and your, and your jewelry that you have around you, and you drink <laughs> beer, and you schmooze with people, I mean, with, and you, you know, run these things, and I think, that, I mean, like, seriously, like, I was telling my daughter before I sat down, I'm like, this guy literally found the greatest job on the South Side. He made it for himself. When you put it that way, yeah. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I am the luckiest guy in the South Side. And I don't necessarily want to say this on your podcast, but I'm not from the South Side. That's ridiculous. I'm from Get Villa out. Park, Illinois. Get out. Get out. You know, like I probably shouldn't mention that, but I am. But I'm super lucky to be able to work with like, you know, Hillstorm and Flipside and Sound Growler to be able to do you these do so kinds well of things. You do so well with the ones that are definitely South. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm thinking about moving to Blue Island, or maybe Tinley Park, or maybe Orland Park. Blue never, Island, Blue never Island, Evergreen Park. If wait, well, I'm an Evergreen. <laughs> so you're messing with me. But I am, Blue yeah. Island is like th- those people out there. Like that's a fun place. Like if I were looking for a place to live, I'd, I'd be exploring Blue Island just because it's just so eclectic and there's so much stuff that's going on there. Oh yeah. Tinley's got a great brewery scene. So I yep. love this area around here. Like you could really just get yourself lost in all the restaurants and the, and the, and the breweries and stuff like that. There's there's a couple of neighborhoods like I've actually checked off and I'm like, if I left Evergreen, these would be on my <laughs> list of places that I'd be going to. On a completely random aside, I finally got a chance to get check random out. with me. We got yeah, a beer. Yeah. We're sitting outside. It's a Bang. beautiful November day. Cheers to that. <laughs> Amen. What do you got? Um, I finally got the chance to check out Banging Gavel in Tinley Park. Okay, yeah. That is the fourth brewery in Tinley Park. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know that they were, they had kind of a very soft opening where they just had some outdoor stuff going on for a while. But uh, the John, the one of the bartenders over at Flipside, I was there earlier in the week. He said, yeah, you can definitely check out Banging Gavel tonight. And they were open till 10, so I figured I'd swing over there and, and check it out. I might go check that out. I, met, I got to see them in Evergreen Park a year ago. He was at a table for a beer fest that the library was putting on, and he didn't have a physical space yet. Oh. Basically. Like, he yeah. was, like, just starting. And I was like, I'm rooting for this guy. So, uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing this, but they're in the Vought, Vought, Vought House. Okay. It's right by the railroad tracks in Tinley Park. And super classy. Really? Inside. All right. The bartenders were super attentive, super pleasant. It made me feel like I was in a five-star restaurant. Okay. Being inside there, I only had time for one beer, which uh, right now they don't have any beers on tap. They just have guest beers. And uh, it was just nice to be in there and checking out the scene. When I walked in on a Thursday night, it was packed. At least the bar area was packed. And uh, that's a place I definitely want to check out again and maybe try some of their food items if there I can come a little earlier. There you go. But uh, to any of the Southsiders out there, I'd highly recommend checking out Bang & Gavel. I think uh, John Streets also wants to have a, an artisan market at Bang I & mean, Gavel with that. Yes. Like, he's, he's working I it didn't, right I, now. You know, he's I'm, like, I'm going to talk about Bang & Gavel, <laughs> and then I'm going to tell him, like, hey, I was on Southside Pod talking about you, and let's do a market there. I can see it. I know what you're doing. I'm a man of opportunity, <laughs> you know? I like all the opportunities, and that, you know, 
Wouldn't it be wild to have, you know, four shows in one weekend right. at all four breweries in Tinley Park? Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. No, I, you that, know what I think we should do? Here's what I think we should oh, do. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's do an artisan market, four different breweries in Tinley Park. And then let's have a Southside Pod bus Ooh. that brings people around on the bus, now and that, we'll do it together. That is a great idea. Yeah. Now we just have to get all four breweries on board with yeah, that. Yeah, I think we can get them. I would, I would host that. I think that. we can get them. It'd have to be in 2024 sometime. That's fine. It's not I'm not going up for the rest of the year. Yeah, I got nothing else to do. But, uh, yeah. no, I, I, uh, I'll I, talk to my people. All right. You talk to your people. <laughs> I'll talk to my people. Uh, John Streets has uh, all these great artisan markets, and I, I literally just called him today, and I was like, hey, I'm going to go to the thing at Soundcrawler. Do you want to talk? I can bang out some content. We'll just we'll just have a beer together and, and talk about the vinyl market. When I'm guessing you'll do another vinyl market after oh, you saw this thing. If they'll let me. What else do you have coming up though? You got Krampus. So I've you got, got the Krampus market coming um, up in Blue Island, I know, yeah, in a couple of weeks. 10 at yeah. Blue Island Beer Company. I've got the Krampus market. Krampus. Um, Krampus, Krampus. We had this oh, conversation yeah, we, last did, year. we did, we did. And I still think it's Krampus. It's probably Krampus. Even though it's probably Krampus, but who cares? <laughs> um uh, so that's 1210 at Blue Island. I want to say t- this year is 12 to 6. Yeah. Um, other Southside shows I've got include... You got a Hailstorm one coming up here. Yeah, Hailstorm on 11 12. Yeah. Their winter, Great brewery. Winter version of their... their um, Flurry Market. We did a complete rebrand on the marketing, so I've got some great stuff in the event page on Facebook if anyone wants to check it they out. They got a brand new Belgian over there. It's like Ooh. 10%. It's spectacular. You though. like you like the, the high... Do. You should be at Fobab right now. Yeah. Maybe I should be. I, it's only today and yesterday. I am my 17-year-old uh, designated driver today. I'm just going to have her drive me to breweries. We we're going to go to Costco, but now you're talking about all these breweries in the area. I think I'm just going to have her drive me around. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have that, but, you know, I've got all this. Um, but the uh, Fobab, I got the opportunity to check out Fobab yesterday. Um, never been there before, but it's all the high-gravity barrel-aged beer. It's the FOBAB stands for the Festival, Festival of Barrel-Aged Beer. Yeah. And uh, it's it, a magical event. You're telling me that this is where I need a plan to go next year? 100%. Okay, where is this uh, at? This is at the Credit One Theater. Or Amphitheater. Or Amphitheater, Something whatever, like that, yeah. whatever it's called in yeah. Chicago. Okay. Um, I had to resist to try all the amazing high gravity beers oh, that they had. that's one you and have to have somebody take you home afterwards. Any, yeah, yeah 100%, oh, or yeah. don't drive, yeah. Right. Find a don't friend that drive. lives in the area. Don't drive. Yeah. If yeah. you can't find a ride, curl up in a ball and yeah. sleep it off I'm at all Fobab. about drinking responsibly. Right. And uh, this this basically had over 100, I want to say 400 different beers, don't quote me on that, uh, different barrel-aged beers from all these different breweries all across the United States. It's a giant festival, and I, I think around maybe 2 o'clock today or uh, sometime today, they're going to announce the winners in all the different categories that they have, and then each one of those breweries is going to get more excited and more popular after that event because of the wins that they get at that particular event. Yeah. John Streets is really, he's throwing an artisan market, but he's also telling you everything that's going on. Like, this guy, is, I mean, uh, he should have his own podcast. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> He no, no. Just, just no, have his own it, pocket. no. I'm an introvert. I can't do the podcast <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you seem introverted for sure. All right, uh, John Streets. Uh, we're we're at Sound Growler. Uh, check out uh, the Streets Arts Alliance on Please. all the social media. Find out where they're going to be next. We talk about it on Southside Pod. I, I'll probably see it at Hellstorm. I know I'm going to see it at Krampus. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to be Heck at that. Yeah. I I love that. Last year, Krampus walked up next to me, and, and rumor and, has it Krampus is going to be returning. Yes, to join us at yes, that event. We need to have Krampus there. A new revived Krampus. Oh, a different Krampus. Not a different camp- Krampus, but a, scarier Krampus, bigger Krampus. I don't know the real Krampus. Perhaps the real Krampus. Okay. Yeah. All right. Prepare yourself for that. <laughs> Only Blue Island would host the real Krampus. It seems like a logical place. I right? don't know if I can agree with that, but uh, it seems sure. like a logical place yeah. where Krampus. I mean, would it's pop a great up. place to be, and you it definitely is. should go. It is. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Chris. I have a confession to make. It's true. And I'm guessing you have done the same thing. Put more time into thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for your retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree with you. And I want to help you out. I've got a local, experienced, down-to-earth guy who's a friend of this show. He's got a get-to-know-you approach and do-the-right-thing values. And he's been around for over 20 years right here on the South Side. His name is Tom Walsh. He's located on the corner of 111th and Kedzie, and he's waiting for your call. In times of financial uncertainty, 
How can you stay on track? Call someone who's invested in your success. Reach out to Tom now, 773-779-0023, or pop in at the office right on 111th and Kedzie. Tell them we sent you. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. We spoke with a wonderful young lady about a program going on over at the University of Chicago. Their Institute for Population and Precision Health is partnering with the National Cancer Institute to launch the Connect for Cancer Prevention Study to help understand what causes cancer and how to prevent it. They need your help. They're looking for participants aged 40 to 65 with no history of cancer. Together, you, them, we can all make a change. Learn more at cancer.gov slash connect study and join the University of Chicago in this endeavor. Sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar, I have two gentlemen that have been on this show individually before about two very, very different subject matters. And I find this very cool that they found each other and wrote a book. It, it, it is incredible to me. I have Kevin Barron here. He is the guy who's got the Instagram account, South Cook Explorer. He's been on the show before. He goes and he explores all these really cool, cool spots all over the South Side. And then I have Jason Barry, who's really the guy that brought us into the village of Lamont and started showing us around a couple of years ago and has been on the show to talk about all the cool things that they do in the village. And you guys combined to write a book called Images of America, Lamont. And I, I think it's, it's, it's awesome. First of all, welcome to the show, guys. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Tom. So, so where does this come from? Where does the idea of this book come from? I mean, when I'm on a podcast and I'm talking a book, it, it always feels weird because it's audio and nobody can see what's in it. But I will tell you that there are an awful lot of pictures. It, it looks like it's a very easy read. <laughs> and it's a historical book on the village of Lamont, which is, you know, a very interesting place because it was along the i m Canal. So it was bustling, even back in the old days. Before we tell the story, I'll let Kevin start how we got together on it. But this book did get released this week, so go buy it. It's in stores now, and you could just follow along as we talk. Just yeah, imagine, <laughs> right? Stop the podcast for a moment. <laughs> yeah. And then pick book up a right book, because right that's what they want you to do. They want you to get the book, because the book just came out 12. this week. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to read along with you. We'll do, a, we'll do an entire podcast <laughs> companion to the book. That's what we'll do. Right. How do you guys find each other, first of all? I, I, I want to say that it was... We were driving back from something, and we were at an event, and and Jason just kind of leans over and goes, "You know, we could we could write one of these books, like <laughs> like you know, regular people write these books. We could we could do this. We we are the people that can do these kind of books. So why not? Like that was the motivation that I needed. I, I think it was like the next day or two after that, I was contacting Arcadia to um, find out if, what what the requirements are and and what we had to do to get this book together. And this is the first book for the two of you guys. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. New, new authors, first time you ever write a book. I find it funny on on the network. I've had a couple different authors over the last couple of months who were either first time authors or authors that were encouraging people to get into writing and start, you know, getting their ideas down on paper. How daunting was it? Two guys here in the south suburbs going out into Lamont, putting all this together. But how daunting is it to say we're going to write a book, but then you got to figure out publishing? you know, where you're going to get all the information from, how you're going to work it all out together. Was it, was it something that felt overwhelming? Luckily, Arcadia Press, um, the publisher, Images of America is a classic series. There's hundreds, probably thousands of them. And one of the things about like, we could write this book is like, wait, Woodridge has a book. Romeoville has a book, you know, like why doesn't Lamont have a book? So, um, you know, Kevin put together the application, you apply to Arcadia, they see if it's a gap in their collection and so if you're a town, you. if you're a village, if you're an area that is not included in this series, Blue Island, and somebody wants to write a book about it, they'll give you a shot is what you're saying. They, yeah, they had a couple of requirements about what, how many photos you had access to and making sure that they were, you know, original copies of your photos. But once you can confirm that you had the requirements of what they needed, they seemed pretty okay with it. I mean, they approved us pretty fast with, with getting this ready to go. And they did. I think we signed the contract with them in January. You start off by sending images, scans, you make sure, you know, they give you all the parameters. They say, okay, each caption is 50 to 70 words. Each chapter begins on an odd page and your chapter starts with 350 words. So having some constraints in some ways helped make it easier to write. Sometimes it made it more difficult too, you know, like 
you have to chop it down a, a lot that you wanted every, to say. Every time we want to eat up 12 words of crediting <laughs> MWRD. So, so there's, yeah. like a, there's a formula that it's you're a formula. saying, okay, here's yes. a section, say something about the section, yes. put your pictures in, caption the pictures, this is what we expect, this is where it ends up inside of the thing, and yeah. you've got to be selective about your pictures. So where, where do you gather the pictures? Because I imagine that you, both of you had access to historical pictures based upon the things that I've learned about the two of you over, over your time where you <laughs> popped in on Southside Pod, you guys kind of hunt these things down. And you, you, of course, Jason, you have probably the ability to knock on the door of the Lamont Historical Society because you work for Lamont and say, hey, get me some pictures. I'm writing a book. That's exactly what I did. Um, on the front of the book, it says, in association with the Lamont Area Historical Society, we think of them as an author of this book. And this book, actually, all the proceeds from the book go back to the Historical Society. You guys aren't making any money? Not a, not nope. anything. Really? Nothing. Nope. That's a shame. All the royalties. Pollyanna Brewery should give you some beer or something, right? You <laughs> well, gotta come. well, you should repeat that clearly <laughs> and a second time. <laughs> well, it's wonderful that this is going to be you know, a fundraiser for the Historical Society. And almost all pictures in this book come from their collection. It also helped us create a framework for it. So if somebody says, why wasn't I in the book? I could say, we didn't find your picture in the historical society. I'm telling you right now, if I was making a book like this, I'd be walking around saying, how do I get like restaurants I like to eat in and places, <laughs> so an places I like to hang out? How do I get them in the book so I can get a perk later on because I put them in I, the book? I, I, I don't know if I should mention this. Did you, did you figure that out at some point, no, Jason? No, did you start, not related did you start to listing that. No, 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 like, no. If I, if no, I can no. get a picture of such and such and it's a free steak for me, did you start figuring that out or no? I, I, I do have two personal things in the book. I, I turned to page 10. Oh, really? There's a map and oh, Blue Island this. is listed on that map. So we have four different maps that we had commissioned for this book, and they look beautiful. I, they're, they're such a highlight of this book is seeing unique maps that haven't been seen before. Is that what this, is that what this map is, is, is signifying, that at some point everything was underwater, but there was an island, and it's named Blue Island, and that's yeah. where that comes from? Yeah. The rest of uh, Blue Island was surrounded by Lake Chicago, was held in place by glaciers. So when you're out in like the Palos Preserves and... Payless Township, Lamont Township, that's the edge of the glaciers. Oh man, we could get nerdy. I'm already nerding out on it because you have these two, you have the 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 river, right? You yes. got Lamont looks like, I mean, it makes sense why it's called Lamont because of the way that the, the landscape is is formed. Yes. All right. You've got, uh, and then you've got just this lake that sits out there and then you have this thing called Blue Island. And I'm like, this is where this eventually becomes Blue Island. It does. Yeah. You know, so it really was an island. Yeah. A yeah, long, like long time Stony ago. Island, Mount yeah. Forest Island. It's crazy. Uh, you see all these places that have islands in the name and yeah. there's, there's a reason for Mount it. Mount Forest Island is where St. James at Sag uh, or Monk's Castle is at. And the reason Lamont is so well known for its limestone and its quarries is because as the glacial lake was cutting through, forming the Des Plaines River Valley. It basically eroded all of the glacial drift down to bedrock. So when they came in to build the i and Canal, bedrock was basically at, at grade level, right. and they discovered cores. You guys both come from a little bit of a different background. Kevin has been doing this thing where he's jumping around, and he's taking pictures of buildings in their current state. How many of the old pictures were you able to find a companion picture where you're like, oh, that, that place still exists? And were you tempted a lot to like try to put like this is what it looks now in the book? We were we were certainly limited on being able to use current photos. I've I've certainly noticed from taking photos on my own, like, oh yeah, that, that building looks the exact same. Or very few alterations have been done to these buildings in the last 50, 100, 150 years. Some of them look almost identical to what they would have been mid nineteenth century. Do you guys think that at some point you're gonna now that this book will get out, you're gonna have some people like saying that's my grandpa in the book. That's so and so in the book. Like you're gonna start. You're gonna get people that we are gonna sit there. We and... those people to make this book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you did. You found people that you know, the older people that are living in the area that were able to hand over their personal photos as well. A few. Again, we didn't want to go crazy with the personal photos. Just it would be a lot of logistics. And again, sticking with the historical society, this book also celebrates their archive. Um, but a uh, past board member and volunteer, Barb Bannon, she had two pictures that she said, you know, she came to us with and she's like, I really think you would be interested in these. And I was like, yeah. So we, we did. Yeah, we found a way to make, make those photos work. They, they were included for sure. But yeah. Um, Kevin mentioned to me, what is it? Chicago Heights already did a, a revisited book. So 
you know, there's always an opportunity for Lamont Part Two. Oh, you're already Not- trying to figure out how to make your second one. You <laughs> We've already had like Book Two and Three in mind right, before this was right. even approved. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, like we're we're already thinking long term. How do people pick up the book? How do they get it? Jason just made some deliveries earlier today. You're yeah. just dropping them off at people's houses? You're giving out your cell phone number? <laughs> I dropped one off call at your Jason, house. <laughs> call Jason on his phone and he'll run, run over to you. Yeah. We'd be happy to. Uh, no, there are a few places that will be available in Lamont, uh, in the downtown, Ike Sports at Three Stories Books, at Mabel's Market, uh, Smoky Row Antiques, and Pollyanna Brewing. Ah, it will see, also be you got a, the book in Pollyanna Brewing. We also have it available at the Lamont Area Historical Society. Uh, we have a launch event on the 17th at the library. So we'll be there along with our um, collaborator, Pat Camelier, who did the foreword for us, uh, signing books and talking about the process. That's a cool event, too. Like, we got to highlight where the money is going for that event. Like, that is a, a unique event for us because the profits, that, or profits, the book sales that we, we generate from that night, 50-50 split. It's, it's half to the Historical Society that night and half to Friends of the L- Lamont Library. So we're, we're excited to make sure zero that we can to contribute to it. Yeah, zero. Absolutely zero. nothing. Nothing. Yeah, they got to get you something. Somebody's got to give you something. We got bookmarks. Somebody get these guys a steak dinner and a couple of six packs. You know, we do have an event coming up at Pollyanna Social, too. I think it's November 28th. Okay. So we're going to talk about the history of what was called Smoky Row. So that was the vice district in Lamont in the 19th century. And then also pair up what they're doing with spirits with some of the immigrant uh, immigration that happened over the course of the 19th century in Lamont. So we'll be talking about the Irish arrival and drinking some Pollyanna whiskey. We'll be talking about the Polish arrival and drinking Pollyanna vodka. That's The cool. Swedish arrival and drinking their version of Malort called Dead. So okay. that'll be, you'll get a pint of Lamont 150 and I think a light thinking as well. So that's the 28th. So I've already Pollyanna. marked it down. I've already yeah. marked it down. It's, okay? That's going to be a really cool event. It's in my History drinking event. calendar. I'll put it down there. I'll put it down <laughs> On there. the 30th. I've only had one Lamont 150 lager, <laughs> and I'm already getting my dates he's, wrong. He's at a half of 150, so he's at 75. <laughs> okay, all right. On the 30th is the thing at Pollyanna. Uh, the book can be picked up at all kinds of places, including Pollyanna and Lamont. Okay, Jason will run, run over to your house if you really need him to. And uh, and and seriously, it's a cool looking book. It's definitely something that if you're interested in the area that you should want, you'd want to check out. And uh, guys, I appreciate you bringing it by and let me take a look at it. And uh, and hopefully uh, you get a lot of sales off of it. I think it's cool the two guys that never put a book together found each other and put a book together about their town. Thanks. We think it's cool. I'm I'm excited to have my neighbors find out about this. Like, and now you're an accomplished author, and you got to right? say that. Now you get to use that too, right? You get to throw that about. What do you do for a living? I'm an author. <laughs> Just, you know, add that on the business card. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. It's the South Side. It's the South Side. Y'all come back now, you hear?